conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. in the saddle uh, full time as of today uh, still getting reacclimated and getting getting into the groove of things but uh, it was much needed uh, much needed break trust me uh, with that being said I want to get back right into the ground I've been on it all day uh, and I'm not going to stop now look Everybody's doing what they normally do this time of the year, and that's celebrating the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, being a, a, a person who uh, came into themselves during the uh, 80s, uh, you know, I graduated high school in, 80, in uh, 86. So coming up and, you know, being, you know, a teenager uh, when they finally voted to make this a holiday. Uh, I remember how excited everybody was, and you know, and, you know, my family and I were included. You know, hey, I was young. I hadn't so much I had to learn and had not learned as of yet, and I'm still learning and still growing. But uh, I remember that, and now as I look at it and see. Uh, the trail of symbolic uh, achievements. In other words, things that have an image of gaining something but bringing with it no intrinsic value. Uh, I look at this and I go, okay, what did we get outside of a holiday um, in which most of us are actually going to go out and spend money into an economy that does not serve us? Um, this isn't me raining on no parades, man. If you love Dr. King, you love him. Um, the Dr. King that I have mad love for is the Dr. King that was last two years. I don't have any hatred for any part of it. Uh, but that moment when he realized that he was moving in the wrong direction and he made a pivot. And he made that pivot having read his memoirs understanding that it would likely end up in his premature death yet he did it that right there that dude yeah i feel him um the one that had the dream and became the buffer for white supremacy by way of the uh, johnson administration not so much but i'm not the guy to shit on anybody i mean everybody's growing i got some shit that you go back 15 years that i'm not proud of uh i grew up i changed i learned that's what it's about uh, Malcolm told us that you know you got to be careful when you start to hold people and judge people because remember at some point you didn't know what you know you didn't that was a point where you didn't know what you now know and it's important to gain that understanding so I, I try to be very patient with my people and it 
has been a journey and it has <laughs> well it's it's taken me for a loop in so many different ways but I'm still standing I'm still persevering I'm still pushing I'm still here uh, so I get that part but here's my thing here we are almost 40 years from that symbolic day when the uh, uh, Dr. King's birthday became a national holiday here we are and we've lost ground socioeconomically the wealth gap has widened uh, home ownership we gained literally no ground we're still at 41 percent from the 1960s that is a problem crime uh, has increased violence has increased mental illness has decreased increased uh, suicide rates have increased um, divorce and single parent households have increased everything that is in opposition of the very things we need in order to be what we need to be to become autonomous to become independent to become powerful are working against us because we haven't taken the steps necessary to change them we haven't uh, created agendas we haven't created strategic plans we haven't looked at blueprints I did the blueprint 1.0 for black empowerment 12 years 12 13 years ago uh, it's been up since then the few people that go by and check it out come by and go wow uh, ooh. it means absolutely nothing if we can't get together as a collective and start carrying it out when I did that blueprint I took it and I took it to people that I looked up to who were uh, you know, available. Of most note, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson and his wife, Joanne. And I got their cosign on it. One area of disagreement was that Dr. Anderson believed and his wife believed that if blacks didn't do something drastic economically, uh, as far as moving towards black group economics on a vertical scale and literally carrying out the things that he put forth in Poweronomics, that we were going to become a permanent underclass. I disagree with that. I disagree with being a permanent anything. I don't believe in it. Uh, but the numbers and the way that he came to it, I definitely understood it. I just disagreed with it. But other than that, he was like, this is on. Uh, his wife, Joanne, commended me because of uh, paying tribute to him in this blueprint and others. Um, I just stood on the shoulders of some pretty exceptional and remarkable people, took what they had already put out, expanded it, learned, developed strategies and built out on it. Um, I want to have more people think that way, do that way, move that way, act that way. We have to be our own saviors. And that's the mindset that I want to put out for people is we need to be our own saviors. We need to be the ones who are working to change our situation. We need to be working on socializing our young boys. We need to be work on developing the identities of our young girls. We need to be developing businesses to give ourselves jobs. I was talking to uh, a person who has agreed to come on as a client and will be coming on in the next 30 days. Um, um, and one of the things that he's big on is training and teaching and being in a position to hire our own. You don't know how important that is. Uh, you don't have to worry about discrimination when you have the capacity to provide jobs. Uh, when you can sit up and say, like they do, when someone comes and say, well, hey, so-and-so has been having a rough time, uh, you know, send him over. I, I, I'll, I'll give him a chance. That's what they're doing. We are looking and hoping that they're going to actually pick us up over them to give us a chance when we're having a rough time. That's not how it's going to work. So we need to be strategically in a position to do that. That's that's just one thing. There's so many things when I look at this and I say, OK, here we are. We've had all these parades today. We've celebrated all of this and we're still where we were or worse than when this happened and when he made his great stand and when he decided that he was going to Washington this time not to talk about a dream but to cash a check 
oh, they weren't ready for that. And, 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 and to read the stories and understand the lengths that the U.S. government went to to extinguish the life of this man and literally be found guilty of it in 1999 is, 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 is absolutely crazy. So then at the end of the day, he lived to what he, he, he said. The, the, the thing that all the stuff I've read about him, I've read every speech because I'm a speaker. I've read every speech. He's one of the greatest orators of all time. And I've read his memoirs and I read his interviews. I've watched his interviews. And one thing that he said that just will not leave me, he says that a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. He lived at the end. He decided he found his thing to, that he was willing to die for. And I, I long ago found that thing for me. It's, it's my manhood. It's my responsibility. It's my role as a black man to stand up and protect black women, to stand up and defend and guard black youth and to cover and, and pay homage to, 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 the, to the black elderly and the ancestors, but more importantly, to push and forge a role and a path for the advancement of my people uh, unapologetically. And I've done that to the best of my ability and I will continue to do so. But what we have to ask ourselves when we are walking around and we're celebrating this man is what have we taken outside of the feel good, the emotional charge? What are we doing to build? What are we doing to lift? What are we doing to empower ourselves? And there's very little out there. We've got work to do, people. I've talked to you about uh, the need to socialize our young black males in the power that comes with that. So much of the ills we see with young black males can be uh, mitigated and managed and literally reversed with proper socialization. We won't get behind it. Talked about the need to provide wraparound services for our young women who have gone through traumatic events, uh, whether it's as ch children, whether it's as an intimate partner, uh, or, or, or whether it's uh, random violence, whatever it is, we need to have wraparound services. We need mental health wraparound services for men and women. We need all these things. Okay, that sounds great, Doc. That's awesome. You're such a. I don't need anybody to pat me on the back. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm awesome. Those people who love on me and do that on a regular basis, you know who you are. I appreciate you. And you definitely keep me charged, but that, that's not why I came here. I didn't come here to get my ego stroke because what I could actually do if I wanted that is I can go out and create something on my own that didn't give a damn about my people and big up and maybe even be like some of these jackasses and exploit my people and get a whole bunch of pats on the back and get a whole bunch of, hey, whatever you want, just call me. Oh, get a, I, I could have been done that. With what I know and what I'm capable of doing and the gifts I have, all I do is sell you guys down the line a long time ago and I could rope my ticket and I didn't. I've lost clients because I wouldn't. Because I wouldn't shut up. Because I wouldn't just, you know, like they told LeBron and, and shut up and dribble. You know, just shut up and do your thing. You don't need to be talking about that stuff. That you, This is your lane. You know how many more clients I could have in the coaching arena, in the, uh, in the therapy arena, if I wasn't so pro-black, if you couldn't go and type my name in and all this stuff pops up that I've written, that I've talked about. Nobody wants to hear somebody like me talking about the war on black wealth and then outlining it in detail and being able to validate it and prove it. That book made people uncomfortable. Nobody wants to read Born in Captivity, my 19th book. They don't want that out there because I'm chronologuing every freaking thing that's been done to us since 1619 and how it's impacted our behavior and how we get maligned for our behavior without talking about what caused it. They don't want that. So, no, I'm not here for the pat on the back. I'm here because I want to make a difference. I'm here because I want to see us win. But we better get it together because right now. This individualism, this 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 casual approach to things, this. It is what it is, and you know, it hasn't landed on my doorstep yet. Just keep staying there. It's coming. We've got to get out of that. We have to see the urgency of now. That's something that Dr. King did have in his I Have a Dream speech, is the fierce urgency of now. We 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 don't get the fierce urgency of now. We don't get 
how important it is for us to have strategies, for us to have programs, for us to insulate our youth and prepare our youth to be winners. We want to deride them and talk about how horrible they are after they grow up without any guidance, without any sense of identity, and without any chance of really having the modeling and everything they need. And then we want to deride them how horrible they're animals, they're evil. We cre they weren't born that way. So then we have to ask ourselves how they got that way. And what are we going to do about it to change it? We can't keep sitting on our hands. We can't keep sitting up passing the buck. We're going to actually turn over a worse world to the next generation than what we inherited. That's where we're headed. We keep ending up on the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder because we refuse to make stands, make moves, make commitments, adopt strategies and agendas and move behind the people who are putting in the work. It's that simple. No, this ain't a feel good thing. This ain't something that, yes, it's what it is. We are screwing our own selves. You can't keep talking about white supremacy when you keep screwing yourself. When you keep throwing your kids under the bus. When you keep sending them to places that don't have their best interests at heart. When you keep sitting up thinking you can have 1.5 million black men missing, 1.3 of them in prison, and you don't have to have some kind of special interceptive program to make up for that with young black males so that they know what they need to be when they grow up because their models are gone. And what's going to happen is a large number of them are going to end up going down the same road. We're going to have to talk about how lost our baby girls are and the images they're chasing on Instagram and TikTok just for somebody to click the like button. We're going to have to talk about how our, 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 the image of our sisters are suffering to the point that they're risking their lives to get these uh, 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 physical augmentations to the already perfect. We're going to have to talk about some things. We're going to have to be willing to acknowledge we ain't doing the shit we need to be doing. This is real. Look. It is what it is. I had to get this off my chest, you know. Uh, much love to the family of um, Dr. King. Big love to everybody out there. I love every last one of you. But we've got work to do. And as far as you saw the intro to this video, you know we've been doing the fundraiser forever. We are so far, far behind in funding it's absolutely ridiculous um, and I wake up every day and I still do what I do because there's this big gulf of just lost because the gaps and everybody's falling through it and nobody seems to be caring and we're losing generations we're losing so many and then there'll be a new generation 15 20 years from now going